Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here, DocSports.com. Welcome to the update for Tuesday, September 10th, 2019. Free pick coming up in just a moment. First quick note, if you've yet to become a member over at DocSports.com, just want to give it a trial run, real cool way to do so. And you get the DocSports.com guarantee on top of it. It's a free $60 account. All you got to do to get started is click on the link below this video. And again, set up for the free $60 account, which you can use on any of my daily packages or anyone else on the roster over at DocSports.com. Again, all you got to do to get started, click on the link below this video. Free $60 account. Take full advantage. Hey, listen, NFL recap for week one coming up in just a moment. First quick note, we cashed our loan premium play yesterday and we cashed here with the Houston Texans. Yesterday, though, with that premium pick, we won. We're now 6-1 and one in September baseball over at DocSports.com. We are up over 15 units in September baseball and I've got a six-unit play going on Tuesday night slate. DocSports.com. It'll be available on Tuesday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific and anytime after that. Again, a six-unit play over at DocSports.com and baseball for me. As far as football, you know the drill. If you don't, if you're new to these videos, our college football and NFL plays posted on Thursdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Got a couple of big plays in store for this upcoming week in both college and pro football. We'll head into week two of the NFL on a 62-37-2 run. Again, in NFL, that's a 63% winning mark. And going back uh, some 260-some plays in college football, we are now hitting over 58%. So all that going for this weekend, it'll all be available Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Don't forget about the WNBA. We ended the regular season on two real nice runs, 15 and five short term, 41, 20 and two long term, almost 70% with those last 63 plays. And of course the uh, WNBA playoffs get underway on Wednesday. Uh, my place posted by 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, Wednesday afternoon. All right, before we get to the free pick for Tuesday, you know the drill, Tuesdays during football season, that is our weekly recap of the NFL where we toss out some of what we think is pertinent information and has helped us to extremely well in the NFL over the last several years, including a top 20 finish in the Westgate Super Contest just a couple of years ago, claiming about 25,000 uh, after entering for 1,500, not a bad profit. Let's get to it. Let's talk about the NFL recap for week one. Bills over the Jets, 17-16. And by the way, these aren't necessarily in schedule order. They're as I took the notes as I was watching the games. Bills 17, Jets 16. You know about that. Bill's coming from behind uh, to get the win. Listen, Le'Veon Bell looking good, both running the football, catching passes out of the backfield. The big question, how are the Jets corners going to fare this year? Not too hot in the final quarter against the Buffalo Bills, that's for sure. Listen, the Bills had four turnovers and uh, yet held the Jets to 223 total yards of offense. Sam Darnold, 28 for 41, but basically only about a little over four yards per pass in the game. He got sacked four times. Ravens, we know they thumped Miami 59 to 10. We know Lamar Jackson was 17 for 20. Had a ridiculous day. Uh, also running the football, they did well. Mark Ingram, 14 carries, 107 yards, two touchdowns. They all gained Miami 643 to 200. And all the talk now, Miami's tanking. I don't blame the players if they've already contacted their agents, as is the rumor, uh, to get out of Dodge, so to speak. But uh, a lot of talk about this team tanking. They're about 17-point underdog this week to the New England Patriots. By the way, the book's still out on Lamar Jackson. I see all this social media stuff about, see, everybody said he's got a chance to be MVP. Talking Head said that. Let's kind of pump the brakes. Let's wait a little bit and see what Lamar Jackson does when he faces a couple of the real defenses. Maybe not even this week, but a couple of weeks down the road. Falcons lose to the Vikings 28-12. to Horrible first half for Atlanta. Uh, they finished with just 269 yards, or I should say the Vikings finished with just 269 total yards. They only gained 18 first downs, Minnesota. So they only threw the ball 10 times. Kirk Cousins went 8 for 10 for 98 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Dalvin Cook had that big game on the ground, ran for a buck 11, 21 carries. Matty Ryan, not good. Interception inside his own 30. Interception in the red zone. In fact, in the Vikings uh, end zone. Uh, 
passed off of his back foot in both of those picks, by the way, if you happen to see the highlights. He ended up going 33 for 46, 304, a couple of the touchdowns, couple of, couple of picks, but not a good day for the Atlanta offense, at least in the first half. Uh, the Skins blow the big lead, lose to the Eagles 32 to 27. Uh, listen, the Eagles have the healthy Deshaun Jackson and the Skins didn't cover him, breaking right down the middle of the field, couple of long passes throughout the course of the game, long touchdown passes, each over 50 yards. And uh, Carson Wentz, he's going to have it open to Sean Jackson. He's going to tear you apart. And then, of course, they got Alshon Jeffrey, the muscle at the other wide receiver position to get some of the tough yardage they need when they're moving the sticks. Case Keenum, 30 for 44, 380, three touchdowns, no picks, not bad, but no ground game for the Skins, who had 13 carries for just 28 yards. Hey, if you saw the game between Cincinnati and Seattle, I think a lot of people would have been a little bit shocked that Cincinnati almost won the game outright. Andy Dalton, 35 of 41, 418 yards, couple of the touchdowns, no picks. He got sacked, though, five times in the game. They had no ground game. The Bengals, 14 carries, 34 yards. Get a ground game, you might win that game. Russell Wilson, 14 for 20, 196, couple of touchdowns, no picks. Hey, listen to this and write it down. Russell Wilson sacked four times in week one. The Rams knock off the Panthers, 32. 27 Rams led 16 to 3 midway through the third. Carolina finally got going. They also benefited from that block inside the Rams' own 20 yard line. Uh, but they were down 23 13 with about 13 minutes to go when that happened. Todd Gurley only five carries in the first half, but he was healthy in the second half. Nine carries, 89 yards. By the way, if you watched, it looked like Todd Gurley before the injuries. He really did. He was cutting back. He was making nice cuts. He was basically breaking ankles at times, uh, just putting guys on their rear ends when they try to come up and tackle him with some of his jukes. So Todd Gurley looked as healthy as we've seen him since before those injuries started him out. Uh, the Rams now 15-3 and three straight up in their last 18 road games. Here's a little side note I made. You might want to I'll write this down and see how Jared Goff does in the passing game over the next couple of weeks. His last two games, the one against Carolina this past Sunday and the Super Bowl loss to the New England Patriots, he is just 42 for 77, 55%. Jared Goff, 42 for 77, 55% completion rate, only 5.39 yards per pass, one touchdown, two picks. Did New England show the blueprint for slowing down the Rams passing game? I guess we'll see over the next week or two. Uh, the Colts go into LA. They lose to the Chargers 30-24 in overtime. Hey, Adam Vinatieri did something he's never done for. He missed two extra, excuse me, one extra point and two field goals in the same game. If he makes those, you're talking about seven additional points for the Colts on the scoreboard. Indy did get the cover in this one and Marlon Mack had a huge game about a buck 74 on the ground behind great play out of that Colts offensive line. Jacoby Brissett wasn't bad 21-27 190 yards cup of the touchdowns and uh, by the way Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson at the running back position for the Chargers uh, they certainly uh, showed that Melvin Gordon may not be needed this season and, and that's not good for Gordon and his contract negotiations. Phillip Rivers big day but he did get sacked four times by the Colts defense. 49ers over Tampa Bay 31-17. Listen, the Niners had six points with 12 minutes to go in the third quarter, and then they broke out. Of course, Jameis Winston helped out. He had two pick sixes. Everybody talked about Jameis Winston, all the improvements he made in the offseason, and I said, I got to see it for a couple of games in regular season play, and he comes out and he flops. Three interceptions in all for Jameis Winston. Bad game. Jimmy G was okay, only got sacked one time, threw a touchdown, also threw one pick. Kansas City, they beat Jacksonville 40-26. You already know about Nick Foles. He's out till at least week 11 after suffering the broken collarbone in the game. Gordon uh, Gardner Minshew, excuse me, Carden Minshew uh, did play well. The rookie quarterback uh, ended up going 22 for 25, 275 through the air, a couple of the touchdowns, one interception. The Jags hurt their chances with a couple of the turnovers. Casey's defense, by the way, I just mentioned the rookie, Minshew's numbers in his very first game ever in the NFL. And we know that that Kansas City defense does have its issues. Fournette was looking good before the Nick Foles injury. I think KC is going to have some problems throughout the course of the year. I do like what the KC offense did with Sammy Watkins, putting him in the slot. They're having him come across the middle. They're having him break straight downfield. You know, he's basically more than just that downfield threat nowadays, and that's a big deal for this Kansas City offense. As good as it was, it could be even better. Of course, Tyreek Hill looks like he's going to be out for a couple of weeks for that offense. Titans 
Falcons over the Browns, 43-13. Cleveland, I guess, reading and believing their preseason press clippings. Baker Mayfield had a horrible fourth quarter, 3 for 9, 21 yards. Three interceptions in the fourth quarter alone. One went for a pick six. But as you know, Cleveland just undisciplined. 18 penalties in the game. Uh, Marcus Mariota, 14 for 24, 248, three touchdowns, no picks. Derrick Henry had a nice game running the football on the ground. Here's the thing about what happened to Baker Mayfield in this so-so Cleveland offensive line. Uh, as they said after the game, Tennessee's defense, they threw everything they knew at Baker Mayfield because they thought they could confuse him, and they certainly did so. He did look confused. Okay, uh, the Giants lose to the Cowboys 35-17. Dak Prescott goes over 400 yards. Nice completion percentage for touchdowns. I loved it when he play action when Zeke was on the field and would go downfield. Uh, five straight wins over the Giants now for the Cowboys. Remember that in the second meeting. Zeke was okay over 50 yards on 13 carries. Listen, I like Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper. They combined for 13 receptions, 266 yards for Dallas. Jason Witten looked pretty good. Three grabs coming out of retirement. Eli Manning wasn't that bad. 30 for 44, 306 and a touchdown. And Saquon Barkley ran for good yardage. The Giants had 470 total yards, but the defense was bad and they also committed a minus turnover rate, a minus two turnover ratio, which certainly did them in in that game. Lions blow it, man. Matt Patricia, he's got a lead. He's got a good lead, size lead in the fourth quarter and can't hang on. They end up tying with the Cardinals, 27 points apiece. Cardinals had like three first downs well into the third quarter and they ended up with 21 first downs for the game. Uh, Detroit, of course, led 24 to six in the fourth. They led 24 to nine with six minutes to go. By the way, Kyler Murray, who he's taken a beating from me also a little bit with his preseason play on some radio shows I've done. He went 17 for 23 in the fourth quarter and in overtime combined. He was 12 for his first 31, and then things seemed to come into place for Kyler Murray. So give the kid credit. Play calling, give that credit too. Finished with a couple of touchdowns, only one INT. David Johnson played well. Larry Fitzgerald still playing well. Uh, Matthew Stafford, 27 for 45, 385, three touchdowns, no picks. But Detroit stepped off the gas. Arizona made a couple of nice plays. Next thing you know, head to overtime, which I hate the overtime rules nowadays. We'll get into that on another video. But they end up at a 27-27 tie. Monday Night Football last night, the Texans find a way to lose to the Saints, 30-28. Texans uh, got the cover for us here on the free video report. Uh, boy, horrible beat for under players. 13 points in the final minute were scored in that one. Both quarterbacks played well. Carlos Hyde played well for the Texans. Alvin Kamara played extremely well for the Saints. They both ran well for the respective teams. But that soft coverage by Houston on that final drive by New Orleans, ridiculous. Poor coaching. We've said that more often than not when it comes to this Houston Houston coaching staff. Denver loses to the Raiders 24 to 16. Final time we're going to see Monday Night Football in the city of Oakland. Derek Carr had a huge game. 24, uh, 22 for 26. 259 yards and a touchdown. Raiders offensive line did not allow a single sack in Carr's 26 dropbacks. Great job by the O-line. Uh, Jacobs played well at running back. The wide receiver Terrell Williams had a big game. So did tight end uh, Darren Waller. I think he's going to do real well. Came up big for this Oakland offense. Oakland sacked Flacco three times during the course of the game. And really, if you watch the game, you saw Denver have a horrible first half on offense. They actually kicked it into gear in the second half. So maybe Flacco starting to get comfortable in the Denver offense after that. So there's our recap for week one in the NFL. As you know by now, the books, they ended up ahead. They had a bad loss on Sunday night with the New England Patriots, but they had so many nice wins uh, for the books and the guys behind the counter throughout Sunday during the course of the day. They did just fine. I mean, the Redskins cover late. The Cardinals come from behind to get the money against Detroit. Cincinnati gets the money against Seattle. That all, those all were big news items. Good news items, I guess, for the guys behind the counter. Bad news items for those standing at the window making their bets. But again, that is our week one recap for the NFL. We'll do this each and every Tuesday, as we've done uh, for a while now, each and every season. Uh, we had a nice weekend overall in the NFL as we finished a few units ahead. NFL college football plays available Thursday. Major League Baseball six-unit play on Tuesday, available Tuesday morning, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. Don't miss out on that. Let's get to the free pick for Tuesday. Battle between the Cardinals and the Rockies in Denver. And listen, you've got uh, Michael Walker in this game going up against Chi Chi Gonzalez. Chi Chi Gonzalez is a mess. He's 0 6, 729 ERA, 169 whip, and 42 innings of work. This team, Colorado, has now lost each of his last nine starts. They are 0 6 in the last six home games. And, and Gonzalez has 
excuse me, 10 walks in his last 11 and a third innings pitched. Love the way Walk is pitching. You've got a Cardinals team that's on an 18 and six run uh, against right-handers right now. And I think they get the job done here in Denver. So we'll back the Cardinals at the time of this report. They're laying around a buck 45, give or take a couple of pennies. So the Cardinals are the free play. Listen, if you like these videos, click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. We'll be right back here Wednesday, 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific with our next free report. I'm Scott Spritzer, DocSports.com. Let's put Tuesday in the win column. We'll talk to you Wednesday.